Hey, cheers from Ed Over at Antique Toys. We're gonna go over real or fake cast iron, or is it real and fake? We're gonna do an overview and we're gonna show examples of reproduction, recasting, uh, restoration for cast iron toys and educate a little bit. So stay tuned for more. Okay, we're gonna start with something straightforward. It's a Hubbly crash cart that's been reproduced. Uh, the wheels on this should be rubber. They're not, they're solid. The fastener should be a rivet. It is not, it's a hex head screw. This one, most people can spot a mile away. Decent decorator piece, but when you see the real deal, you're like, mm, no, not quite just doesn't do it. Um, the scale appears to be slightly smaller. Uh, they have a thing called shrink compensation and so the reproduction usually is not quite the same. Uh, here's an interesting one. 20s racers. It reminds us of Hubbly toys and it's not, uh, they don't claim to be they did a pretty decent job. I was thinking this was 80s, 90s. Uh, this one was sold at the Cows Outside in Minnesota for $21.95. And it is made by Quest or Quest in uh, Creswell, Oregon. And they cared enough on this toy to give an interesting overview of toys in the 1900s and how they were cast. Um, the country of origin could potentially be that same uh, United States in Creswell, Oregon. They did print this in Taiwan, so it makes me a little suspicious, but the, the quality is decent. Um, could have been done by somebody like John Wright. But again, when you see the real one, you say to yourself, ah, I get it. Uh, colors, quite different on the real one. The real one ends up being uh, almost a half an inch bigger. Um, so the original's bigger. The design's quite similar. I would say they probably took the mold and, uh, well, actually they took the toy, created a mold and remastered it. Uh, the driver, similar, but um, the detailing's just not there. So this would be what they call kind of a softer casting the details are not as good the casting's smooth the paint's decent but it's not as smooth it's not as glossy as uh or lead paint style as the older stuff and the wheels of course are dead giveaway rubber with wood centers versus metal um, one can even notice that the spokes are not as well formed next which is an asian vintage racer uh, Inesco is the maker, and I think this one is unabashedly made in Asia, um, 1930s. This would be a Hubbly remastering. Um, this one actually says 90, 1997 made in China, so I will hold that up again. 1997 made in China sticker. The wheels are not nickel plated, they're painted, black painted. Uh, there's not the rivet in the style that they would do. But there still is the word Hubbly in there, so if this was loose, you'd have to watch out. Um, the original tended to be red, tended to not be this yellow. Here's a popular one. Popeye. Popular. Uh, casting's terrible. Uh, the size is much bigger, and it's rough. It's a rough casting. Uh, they're also sometimes a bit more brittle. Pockets, imperfections, impurities from non, um, let's say old school foundries. And the face is exaggerated, but this is 100% fantasy in a fantasy size. Carved, if you will, carved uh, or just from somebody's mind. And the wheels are solid, which again, 
I would have expected a different style of wheel. So, okay, here's the lifesavers. The front, poorly cast, not as well refined. The top, rough, not as well radiused. Um, the wheels are absolutely wrong. They're just simpleton versus something more refined like the old guys. And the version that's more common for lifesavers, and it's already an uncommon toy, but they tend to have room back here to put the lifesaver itself in. Um, we'd also mention that they have a Phillips screw. So that does not cut the mustard. Here we got something that's, that's darned interesting, actually. Um, smooth casting, not as rough as uh, a poorly done Asian like a Taiwan job from the 90s or 80s. Uh, this is marked, sure enough, made in China, but it's a much more refined pattern. They chose to not rivet it together, but they chose to screw it together. They did a straight screw. Much better job, uh, much better there. But the wheels are kind of a giveaway. They're a bit more rough. Here's a really nice reproduction. You'd never know it's a reproduction. Oh wait, it's real, okay. Just busting people's chops. Uh, when you look at the real deal, you can't help but say that looks right. Why does it look right? Well, petrified rubber, not soft rubber. Uh, chips that flake, chips here that are black underneath. Uh, you expect that from age. You expect the paint to get a little brittle and chip possibly at a wear spot. You would expect the hands to chip when it's falling over from the kid rolling it and then it scrapes. That's right. You'd expect a little bit of a bump in the front. The chip is proper. You'd expect little flakes and chips and and a very precise seam. All check. Uh, the color's right because it's original. The swoosh is finely done. Again, original Hubbly work. Um, the badging and the face are pretty well done you know, if not expertly done. Uh, the ladies predominantly would do it with the perfect brush, with the perfect speed, with the perfect paint, and do an amazing job quickly. So they were quite skilled. Like here, this swoosh, hands done, hand done by an expert who did it, I'm gonna guess two, three, five hundred times. And now we'll do a couple more and call it a day, but call this the first installment of real or fake. Fantasy piece. Uh, I bought it because it's a horseless carriage style. You literally have the carriage and you have a steering wheel, but I'm not convinced there ever was a real version of it. Uh, when you got a buckboard bottom and you don't have a box in the back for steam or an engine, um, I'm suspicious of what this was really started with, but if there is a box back here, it would be similar to some of the horseless carriages like the Red Devils and such, where the person would sit and they'd steer. Um, this, I think, is fantasy based on taking a horse-drawn design and doing an almost um, homage to original carriages that then transitioned to steam-powered carriages. One of the best, if not the best, toy of the newly done uh, McAllister, and this is uh, Fonten in Ohio since 1886, uh, McAllister Mercantile 1907, and it's a general merchandiser. I suspect they commissioned this and they had some standards. They, they wanted it done smoothly um, at a good price point, and so it's well cast, the lines are straight, the sand is not as fine as the old sand, so you get a little more inclusions. Like right around here, the skill of the pattern maker is more average versus, um, you know, 1890s where somebody probably would get fired because it wasn't perfect. Um, lettering's decent. Wheels are just not that good. It is very difficult to get wheels done in the perfect casting methods is the old timers, and it always shows. So always look at the wheels. And some of the bumps back here are just a little too much. 
um, and then they use a screw versus a rivet. But I still think it's a great toy. So if you have a chance to pick up a McAllister, um, I think they run under $80 or so. Uh, and there are a couple of, couple of versions of it. Elephant in the Room, New York to Philadelphia Transport. The dent toy is bigger. It's probably this much bigger, a little taller, a little wider. It's also not as heavy. Um, this is a beast. This is very, very heavy. And you might say the high end of artistry was when the castings were extra thin and efficient to save money in weight, to save money in uh, material. This guy, again, probably the shrink compensated or not shrink compensated small version of the bigger one. Um, it's, it's an okay try. It's just not there. The wheels aren't right. The openings aren't right. But you know what? If you find them for $70, um, you know, it is what it is. It's a decorative piece and it's not a thousand. <laughs> it's under 100. So New York to Philadelphia screws homage to the dent if not a recast of the dent mercantile transport like an express truck by the way this is a full restoration at the bottom this is a hubbly res restoration which is immaculate too immaculate but gorgeously done um uh, the last one is a dugan sand and gravel and on this guy you say the casting seems right this seems right the wheels are exceptional, right? They're on the money. The seams are on the money. Most of us don't recall that label, Dugan. If you flip it over, it's signed arcade toys or stamped in arcade toys. There's a place for a driver. That seems right. The wheels just aren't chipped. So one may say, what is going on here? Well, it is a original arcade toy expertly refinished by Iron Man Arnie Prince and then custom labeled to match business cards that he's found. So he picked the color scheme similar to the vintage company color scheme. He picked Dugan Sand and Gravel which I believe was a California style uh, company maybe in 20s 30s and so he created what does not exist in the toy world uh, and he filled in what would have been a private label of the time so it's it's darned good it's a beautiful toy uh, it's just an expert expert restoration using an existing chassis real contemporary fake 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 fantasy contemporary recast of the original potentially American with a nod to the real deal expert resto by Arnie Prince awesome work my friend original arcade cast iron model T fake slash fantasy original piece with body shop style almost over restoration McAllister and the real deal by Hubbley Toys oh and let's not forget Popeye and the dent recasting Okay, so in summary, we have real, 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 but restored, fake, 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 real one, which we didn't touch on, but this is a Ford Model T by Arcade, right as rain because of the wheels, fake, uh, expert body shop style restoration, but just too nice, and then we've got a contemporary, most likely hired um, commemorative that was pretty well done, just for contrast. 
as well as an original Hubbley motorcycle. So have some fun. Uh, cheers from Ed over at Antique Toys. Hope this helped out. Please be sure to comment below. That is much appreciated. Like the channel, please. Check out our merchandise such as t-shirts and have a great day.